example four on page 87 is very close to example three. Again, we are looking at a portion of a parabola, but this time the difference is that the parabola opens sideways. We have x equal to y squared. So if I draw that, here's my x-axis, here's my y-axis, I have a sideways parabola and I'm asked to find the parameter equations for the portion of the parabola between 1 comma minus 1 and 4 comma 2. So 1 comma minus 1, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4 along the x-axis and then I'm going from minus 1 to 2 on the y-axis. So I'm starting here at 1 comma minus 1 and I'm ending at 4 comma 2 and I have a parabola so it looks like actually I'm going to draw that a little higher it looks somewhat like this and the way that I just drew it actually it I went the opposite direction I'm supposed to start at 1 minus 1 and go to 4 comma 2 so the direction of movement would be this way, starting at 1, minus 1 and moving towards 4, 2. How do I describe that? Well, in the previous example, when we had y was equal to x squared, we let t be, x be equal to t. Now we are going to let y be equal to t. And if I let y be equal to t, then x is equal to y squared is equal to t squared. So here I have my um, two equations, x is equal to t squared and y is equal to t. And now the only question is, from where to where does t go? Okay, well let's see. t is equal to y and y starts at minus 1 and ends at 2. And so I'm going from minus 1 for t to 2. So we have our curve expressed parametrically and in vector notation we have r of t is equal to t squared i plus t j and again minus 1 less or equal to t less or equal to 2. And if you wanted to convince yourself, you could double check. You could plug in t equals minus 1 and convince yourself that you, end, yeah, that you start at 1 comma minus 1 and then plug in t equals 2 and convince yourself that you end up at 4 comma 2.